We appreciate the opportunity to come to you from the Grace Baptist Church with this Bible lesson and trust that you will turn in your Bibles and follow along with us in the book of Galatians chapter number 1. Galatians chapter number 1. We're going to be looking at verse number 10. Uh, do I yet, do I seek to please men? There's a difference, dear soul, in fellowshipping with one another in the Lord and fellowshipping with the Lord himself. And I dealt with it last time. The last message that we had was uh, on come out of her, my people. And that is come out of the uh, fellowship of, of just exclusively with the church and believers and having a relationship with just the Bible. Jesus said, in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. You're supposed to be brought on to Christ. So God's given us opportunity in this time of this pandemic to uh, separate ourselves unto the Lord. We've been separated from one another, and we've been separated unto the Lord. So the Apostle Paul was writing to the Galatian Christians, and he was somewhat discouraged with them, and he had to uh, challenge them about some things. He said, uh, well, let me start with verse number one. And the very first thing that he says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul, an apostle, and then he said, not of men, not of men. Uh, verse number 11, I certify you, I make it uh, well known unto you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So he wants you to know and understand that his apostleship was not based on tradition. It was not based uh, on uh, the illumination. It was based on revelation. It did not come to him as just a tradition that he had learned from the fathers. And he did have a great time of uh, instruction from Gamaliel, the, one of the highest ranking and most uh, uh, highly respected rabbis he was. Paul sat at his feet. But he had to go out and unlearn in the Arabian desert for three years those things that he had learned under Gamaliel. So, dear soul, the, the scriptures and church anity is to help you get to Christianity, Christ anity. You are to come to him. There's nothing else that will save you except him. No other name given among men whereby you must be saved. And when you die, dear soul, used to be an old song said, you got to walk that lonesome valley. you got to walk it by yourself. Nobody else can walk it for you. You're going to have to face God yourself uh, in eternity. <coughs> Excuse me. Happens every time when I start uh, trying to get a breath. Dries my throat out. So Paul said, I'm an apostle. First thing he said, not of men. Then the next phrase said, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. He said, I want you to know that that which I am and that which I preach unto you is by revelation. And I want you to know that it will, uh, it will be, he says over here in chapter 2 and verse number 9, that there was a confirmation of his revelation. When James and Cephas, that's Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, he said, uh, they gave me the right hand of Christian fellowship. So the revelation will have a confirmation. You will be uh, noted that your uh, gospel and your ministry and that which you have of the Lord uh, is not just some uh, traditional Jewish warmed over uh, half-baked religion. It was a revelation of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there was a manifestation in chapter 2 and verse number 11. Peter begins to uh, apost apost not apostatize, uh, uh, be become a hypocrite. He dissembled which, uh, in verse number uh, 13 of chapter 2, he dissembled. That's not a word we use today. 
It means if you look it up, he played the hypocrite. And he was not going to have any fellowship with the Gentiles. Once the Jews came down from Jerusalem, he separated himself from his Christian brothers uh, because uh, they were not Jews. Now they'd already hashed all this out uh, in, uh, in their uh, council in, I believe it's Acts chapter 15. But Paul said, my revelation had to come by my isolation. I had to go in the Arabian Desert and stay three years to get all the Jews' religion off of me, and that which I learned of Gamaliel, I could only keep that which God would reveal to me. Yes, there was some of that uh, that really was helpful and I built on, and the whole book of Hebrews is amazing as how he takes those things of of Judaism, of the old economy, and spiritualizes them by the Holy Spirit and brings them over for us to understand what's going on in the New Testament age. Let me read you something. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, uh, verse number 9, Then said he, then said the Lord Jesus Christ, Lo, or behold, I come to do thy will, O God. I come to do thy will. It was the obedience of Christ that provided the elect of God their salvation. If you ask me to pick one word that, uh, that, I, that I could express, and I can only have one word to express to you what was the uh, root of salvation, I would say obedience. And then I would make you know it's not my obedience, not by works of righteousness which I have done, but it was by the obedience of the Son of God, doing what the Father told him to do by God's revelation to him. He said, Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Listen, he taketh away the first. What does he mean? He takes away the first covenant, the Old Testament, the old economy. And then it says that he may establish the second. One is taken away, the other is established. That's it, old and new covenant. And so the Lord Jesus Christ said, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared, thou hast prepared for me. And he said, I come to do thy will, O God. And uh, he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said I, I come to do thy will, O God. It was not the obedience of, uh, of the law and doing what the law said that brought any man any salvation. How many sins were forgiven by the Old Testament sacrifices? Not a one. But brother, there was rivers of blood that flowed with hundreds and thousands of oxen and sheep and so forth that were slaughtered, yes. But it's not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Jesus said, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first covenant of animal sacrifice that he may establish the second covenant, and that is justification by faith in the offering of Christ. For the next verse said, By the which will I come to do thy will, by that will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's it. It is finished. It is done. And there's so, uh, it's not that which we do uh, that, that will obtain our salvation. It is he in whom we believe. For we have come to believe in him, and therefore we shall never perish. But God gives us eternal life because we believe in the only begotten Son of God. But he that believeth not is condemned already, and the wrath of God abideth on him. So the whole thing changed from the Old Testament, do this, don't do that, till the New Testament, Jesus did it, and we have faith and belief in him, and we rely completely upon him. That word believe, whosoever believeth on him, means to rely in, to trust in, to, re to rest in, uh, that we bring every bit of faith and trust and hope we have and say, it's all in Jesus. We put all our eggs in one basket, somebody said, and well they, well they said it. We, we trust Christ alone. So 
the Apostle Paul is telling us here that uh, my uh, gospel is not by men, neither uh, not of men, neither by men, but it is a revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this uh, book, in the first two chapters here, we see, first of all, as I said, Paul's revelation. It said, when it pleased God, verse 15 of chapter 1, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. That is a revelation. He said uh, that I might uh, preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So his revelation required an isolation in order that he might get it all straight from God pure from God, directly from God, and come to understand what those types and shadows, uh, Hebrews 10.1, the law having a shadow of things to come and not the very image of those things could never with their sacrifices take away sin. So he said he came to learn and understand the, uh, the meaning that God had in all the Old Testament types and shadows and was uh, brought on to know the gospel and the a death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So his revelation required an isolation. Reveal his son in me. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. He isolated himself from that. That's important. Because do you realize and understand that if Paul, and we'll get to it in a minute, had not rebuked Peter... Peter would have started a new denomination here in Galatians chapter 2. Do you understand and realize that the gospel that we preach today is pure and is delivered to us through God's use of the apostle Peter, excuse me, Paul, the, through the gospel of the uh, apostle Paul. He revealed it to him. Peter had been told uh, up there on that rooftop, uh, God let that sheet down three times, and Peter said, I ain't going to touch that. God said, don't call common and unclean that which I have cleansed. And, and Peter said, I understood it, <coughs> excuse me, when he got into Cornelius' house, he said, I understand that God was talking about men and not by creeping, crawly things and by animals. That appeared in the sheet. sheet. And when, it, when I saw that sheet, he said, I understood now that God was talking about the Gentiles. Don't call common and unclean those that I have cleansed. So Peter, he had the lesson from God. But dear soul, here it is. When it comes down to being involved with the gang, we tend to want to be accepted by the gang we want everybody in our religious order to accept us, so we try to do everything that they think is necessary and needful for the salvation of the soul. And Peter began to walk away from the Gentiles and deny them, and in his attitude, call them common and unclean again, even after God had showed him over there in Acts chapter 10 that the Gentiles were not common and unclean, God had cleansed them by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul was given a revelation uh, pure uh, unto, to go unto the Gentiles. Peter continued in the Jews' religion. What do you mean by that? Well, he grew up in Jew, in. in, in uh, in Judea. He grew up uh, under this uh, law and, and the influence of the, uh, that. We, we know that he went out and wept bitterly because he denied the Lord, but he did not isolate himself. He was not isolated by God like Paul was, who went out into the Arabia for three years to unlearn all that Gamaliel had taught him. So Paul comes back in completely renewed and having the revelation of God upon him 
And he determined to, to know nothing but Jesus Christ and, and him crucified. And so he brings in uh, a sharp, uh, immediate revelation of Jesus Christ apart from mankind and its influence. Peter continued on in the influence with the other apostles with, in, in the company of the, uh, the chief priests and scribes and elders and that sort of thing. He's still under that kind of influence. And eventually, he goes with the Jewish tradition, and Paul was the one that saved him from it. And dear soul, he saved you from a Jewish uh, gospel instead of a Christian gospel. So there was a revelation. Verse 16, when God, verse 15, when God separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, it pleased him to reveal his son in me. To not just reveal his son to me, but reveal his son in me. That's the Holy Spirit coming into him. That I might preach him among the heathen. I'm to go among the heathen. They're not going to know anything about laws. They're not going to know anything about the sacrifices. They're not, no, no, not going to know anything about the washings and all of this stuff that the Jews had to do. So I'm going to be sent to them, and it's not going to be, uh, 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 I'm not going to be an obstruction to them by trying to make them Jewish Christians, Jewish believers. Dear so we need to get back to the purity of the revelation of God. We have unknowingly, but it will come off on you when you are in a denomination. That denomination will have traditions that will begin to be adapted by you. I remember years and years and years ago, back before you could even remember, they made me superintendent of Sunday school. Lord have mercy, whatever that is. Well, the superintendent of Sunday school had to put on the Christmas program. And they always brought a big old Christmas tree in and decorated it and, and always had a Christmas pageant. And, and there was traditions that they had. Well, it wasn't in the Bible. So I said, we ain't going to do it. My goodness, you would have thought that I told him to bow down and worship Hitler. That really tore that church up. And it was nothing but an old tradition. It was the Christ Mass, Christmas. And they, they had to have it. And, and that's what you have when you stay in something like Peter did. He was not taken out to the Arabian desert. He did not have to spend three years to unlearn and then come to a revelation of God crisp and pure and fresh and new. And, and, and holy, dear soul. And, and so when Paul comes and sees Peter gradually going back into that uh, this denomination of Jewish belief, and, and, and Paul calls it here in verse uh, uh, number 13 and verse number 14 of Galatians chapter 1, the Jews' religion. Galatians 1.13, For you have heard of my conversion in time past in the Jews' religion. It's not God's religion. It's the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And I profited in the Jews' religion. Verse 14, Above many mine equals. So as Paul, who was that time Saul of Tarsus, was involved with all the rabbis and the chief priests and all that, he got so into it that he thought it was God's will to murder and kill and put uh, God's people in jail for this radical new religion, Christianity. And so God let him get into all of that uh, to show him uh, that it was Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. You're not just persecuting those people. You are persecuting me. When he smote the body on earth, the head cried out from heaven, Why persecutest thou me? So there was a, 
there was an immediate understanding that he had to abandon the Jews' religion because God revealed to him what true and pure religion was. But Peter is still in it. And even though he'd been warned in it by uh, the sheep coming down uh, and, and revealing God's manifestation of uh, seeking to save that which was lost, he still slid back into it in this second chapter of the book of Galatians. So who is it, who is it that can straighten out the apostle Peter? It was only a man who had a revelation of the gospel from God and he had a revelation that, had, that required isolation. And that manifests to them a confirmation. They saw the grace, second chapter of Galatians verse 9. They saw the grace. They perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave me the right hand of fellowship. So the revelation in isolation brings a confirmation. They will know that you got something from God. Now they're going to give you a hard time because they're going to be jealous of that. And instead of going and getting uh, what you got from the source where you got it, they want to come at you. And uh, so that, that confirmation came as they saw the grace that was in, in, in Paul, who had been Saul of, of Tarsus. Now he's converted and he's Paul the apostle. And God had brought him into this by revelation, isolation, confirmation, so that when Peter played the hypocrite, Galatians 2 and verse number 11, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Then there is a manifestation. He was able to manifest to Peter that you're wrong. This old, I've had an illustration that I've used here at this church many, many times over the years. We've been together over 45 years. And I've told him about the frog and the water. You all know the story. If you take a frog and put it in a pan of water on the stove and turn the light up gradually and let the heat begin to gradually increase, first thing you know, you're going to have frog legs. That frog is going to adjust to the temperature and not realize that it's going to be to his death. But if you take that, that pan of water and let it boil first and then drop the frog in it, he'll jump out. That first illustration is the Apostle Peter. He just begins gradually to go back and to dissemble, play the hypocrite, and get back into that situation to where he wanted it to be just Jews only. Because when, when uh, the James and the brothers came down to Jerusalem, uh, Peter, he threw his uh, ham sandwich over into the flower pot and wiped his mouth and acted like uh, he hadn't uh, been eating pig. And he, he tried to sit with the, uh, did sit with the apostles that came down from Jerusalem and, and denied the brothers and sisters in the Lord who were Gentiles. Now, how are you going to get, uh, how are you going to get that straightened out? Well, the second illustration, the water's boiling, you drop the frog in, whew, he jumps out. He's not going to stay in it. That's the Apostle Paul. He has been dropped into this thing, and God has revealed it to him, and he understands that the letter of the law killeth it's the spirit of the word that maketh alive. So he gets out of it. And therefore he is able to be a witness to Peter who is gradually going back into this thing so that he might be accepted by those who are around about him. Dear soul, it's a really uh, a hard thing when your children go off to school and they begin to want to please those people that are around them. 
and they 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 get that influence of that crowd, and next thing you know, they're involved in stuff that they never would have been involved in before they went off to college or off to school, off to grammar school, grade school, whatever it was. But peer pressure will gradually bring that child back into uh, off into things to please men. That's supposed to be the title of our lesson. Verse number 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Do so the reason that America is in the mess she's in is because we don't have, uh, uh, we don't have Pauls uh, who have had the revelation of God to them and say, I'm not going to budge. This is uh, given me of God. It is not of man, neither is it by man. I was not revealed it uh, by flesh and blood. Uh, he says in verse 12, well, verse 11 and 12, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel was preached uh, of me, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Verse number 12 of chapter 1 of Galatians. For I for it, I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Dear so the problem in America is not in the White House. It's, it originated in the church house. If preachers were only those who were called by God and those who had it revealed to them by the Holy Spirit what the gospel was and would preach it without fear or favor, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. But because we have seen an opportunity for, you know, for, for a vocation. I, I think I'm going to be a preacher. Well, I don't want to be a, you know, a bus driver. I don't want to do this. That. I think I'll be a preacher. Dear soul, if you're not called of God, you need to get out of the pulpit. And if you are called of God, it will reveal itself. There will be a confirmation that you are preaching the purity and the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have had too many who, like Peter, have been so influenced by the congregation that they want to please men. And therefore, the gospel is rarely known, although we have church entity everywhere, we have people everywhere who are going to church and are practicing religion, but we don't know the gospel from third base because the gospel comes by revelation and requires your isolation. No, I'm not going to isolate. I want to be involved with people. I want, I, I want to be influenced by people. I want to be an influence to people. Well, you will if you are called of God, and God grants you the revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will be, it will be comfort, uh, there will be a confirmation to you, and then you will be able to stand up in a manifestation. He said, I withstood Peter to his face. Because, you see, God showed me this thing so abruptly and so strongly that I cannot... I cannot, uh, I cannot dissemble. I cannot walk away from it. I cannot go back to those old ways. You say, wasn't, wasn't Peter called of God? Yep. But what you have is the comparison with the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. And it is that the way that Apostle Paul came up was absolutely essential for you to have your gospel as pure as it is today. Because if it had been up to Peter, we would have to be involved in Jewish customs and laws in order to be, in order to be saved and be called Christ's church. 
Let's look at Acts chapter 15. I keep thinking about that. I hope that's where, what, what I want to see. <clears throat> yes. Certain men came down. Acts chapter 15. Certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, listen, you cannot be saved. So there you have the Jewish tradition, the Jewish, Jewish religion that Paul speaks of, the Jews' religion, trying to mix itself in with Christ's true, pure religion and saying, if you're not circumcised, you're not saved. Paul wrote in Ephesians, for by grace are you saved through faith and he says, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. It's not of works. Now, it is unto good works. It, they will flow out from you because a, a good tree can't help but produce good fruit. He will produce the things of the Spirit. But these brothers came down and said, I don't like these Gentiles coming in. We had to be circumcised. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to make it a law among this new Christian faith that if you're not circumcised, you're not saved. So verse 2 of Acts 15, when therefore Paul and Barnabas, here he is, Paul right in the middle of it, had no small dissension and disputation with them, uh, they, they got it by revelation they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. We got to add in the Jewish beliefs and customs to Christianity or it's not really Christianity. Peter was doing the same thing. In Galatians 2.11, Peter was doing the same thing. And if Paul had not been there by God's decree and by God's providence to go up to him and to rebuke him to his face, you would have a Jewish belief, a Jewish-flavored Christianity today. It was here at this place that Paul actually stopped Peter from bringing forth a Jewish influenced uh, a denomination. They would be Jewish baptized believers. And if it hadn't been for, for, for Paul stopping that, right there you would have had a new denomination formed. But listen in Acts chapter 15. You've got to be uh, circumcised after the manner of Moses or you can't be saved. And we read on down, and in verse 6 of Acts 15, the apostles and the elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much dis uh, disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, beareth them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. He said, you remember where God sent me to Cornelius' house? None of us had been sent to a Gentile's house uh, up to that time. He said, and God put, verse 9 of Acts 15, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. This was back when Peter had it. He was right. But dear soul, let's start turning that light up just a little bit more and leave that frog, Peter, in that water. And first thing you know, he's saying, uh, he, he's sitting with the Jewish believers and denying the Gentile believers as we see here in Galatians 2.11. All right, Acts 15 Verse 9, put no difference between us, Jews, and them, the Gentiles, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God and put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? I want you to listen to this. Which neither our father nor we were able to bear. 
all of that law of Moses, that tradition, the, the sacrifices, the washings, the, all the rules and regulations, being circumcised the eighth day, we weren't able to bear that. Why are you trying to put that on the Gentiles? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So at that time, when there was this council, as recorded in Acts chapter 15, Peter was still straight, and he had to stand up and straighten it out. James, well, verse 12, the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, when Paul and Barnabas had finished saying all they needed to say, James stands up. James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon, that is Peter, has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets. You can read that in the Old Testament, he said, which was all the Bible they had. It agrees with the, with the word of the prophets, and as, it, as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. And he goes on, and uh, in verse 19 uh, James sums it up and he says in, at this council he says uh, wherefore my sentence is this is the bottom line here's what I say that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God to require them to do what the Jews religion required is a troubling of those who are truly born again but that we write unto them, I want to send back with Paul and Barnabas a letter from the council. We write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Listen. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. They wrote what they said. James said, we need to write this. They said, okay, we'll do it. The apostles and the elders, and, go, and it goes on, and it and it tells you, and I won't for the time read it to you now, but you can finish reading in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning with verse 24, what the letter said. And, and it, was, uh, 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 it was accepted by Peter. But dear soul, as things begin to travel on, as time begins to go by, as we begin to meet week after week after week, and there begin to be people who are brought in, they will begin to bring in things that may not seem to be all that bad at first, but it's just like splitting a piece of wood. You don't hit it with the blunt end of the maul. You hit it with the sharp end of the maul. And if it can just get into that piece of wood and go on down, that maul gets wider and wider. It'll split that wood. And there's so you, sometimes you can just get in a little germ of something and it will eventually wind up uh, taking the true religion out of a church. There's a brother that, uh, that talked to me and I asked him uh, concerning the Jewish Orthodox Church. He had been in Athens, Greece, and they were primarily uh, a Greek Orthodox. And, and I said, but look, they got these things they believe that not even in the Bible. It's just things that it seemed like they made up and they're required now. He said, yeah, 
I asked them about that, and they said, yeah, we know that a lot of our traditions are not in the Bible, but these are our traditions. These are things that we have held to over the years, even over the centuries, and we think that they are just as much the will of God as if they were written in the Bible. Wow, that frog just got boiled. Little by little by little. Just this old, to, to be brought to death, it can only start out with a little bitty germ way back yonder and way down the road. If you don't do something about that little bitty germ, it begins to increase and increase and increase and more and more and take over your body till eventually it will kill you. And the, uh, the apostle Paul is saying here, listen, you men of Galatia, do you understand that it's by the way God has dealt with me in calling me and revealing the gospel in me that has brought you the truth of the gospel which you should believe? Do you realize that it was upon the faith and the, the, the determination and setting his face like flint that he was going to follow God? And he says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men. Verse number one, first thing he says in his letter. Not of men, neither by men. Uh, and, and he says, as we say in verse 12, For I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I got my gospel directly from the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He appeared unto me and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I said, Who art thou, Lord? I didn't know who he was, but I knew he was in charge. And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And from that moment on, that man's life was changed. And he began to seek the person of Christ for his revelation. Why are we not doing it? I'll tell you why. Because we do seek to please men. Do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1.10 Dear soul, <clears throat> the gospel is not here to give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. It is not here to, as being so friendly and wonderful to you unless you are overcome uh, by the revelation of God yourself, you will not glory in the gospel when you first hear it. It is offensive. It says all men are liars. It says the wages of sin is death. It, it, it brings you to understand what a horrible, terrible sinner we are and what the uh, the result of that is going to be if God doesn't do something for us. That's, that's not fun. And, and I wonder about these people who come out of the church and light up their cigarettes and say, boy, that, that was good. I really enjoyed that. I, I, really, uh, I, I really had a good time in church. You must not have heard the gospel. You must not have heard the gospel. And so... It's, it's offensive. It's offensive to the soul. Even in Christians who are still born of the flesh and born of the Spirit as well, that which is born of the flesh is being flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is being spirit at one and the same time, John 3, 6. And so it is even offensive to our flesh. But it's good for us to hear that so that we can get a hold of our flesh and say, get back out of the way. I need my flesh to die more again today. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. 
Paul said, I die daily. You have to die daily because the flesh wants to be nurtured and pampered and it wants to be cuddled and it wants to feel good. Well, you bring that into the church and you do, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, it comes in. And the first thing you know, somebody's going to be mad at that old preacher up there because he hurt their feelings. And if you don't, if they don't learn and understand and see, he didn't mean to do it. It's not his message. It's God's message. He has to stand true to what God showed him. If it is his by revelation, then it is his in isolation. He has to separate himself from all of those hard opinions against him and say, Y'all didn't call me to preach. God did. And I am not going to please men. I'm going to please God. And here you go. And now you got people butting heads. And first thing you know, they're out there having a private meeting somewhere and wanting to separate and draw, draw disciples off from the church and y'all come meet me at my house. And, and we're not going to have that old mean uh, preaching like that. The lady told Mr. Spurgeon, at least you hear all these stories, you don't know whether it really was of Mr. Spurgeon or not. But anyhow, she said, you preach so hard and so so unkind. And so uh, she didn't realize the, the beauty of the gospel. He, she said, I want you to just preach what's in the red letters. I, want, I just want you to preach what Jesus' words are. He said, okay. He turned to John eight forty four, and he said, ye are of your father the devil. Wow, that was Jesus' words. Dear soul, God didn't come to get you to be his buddy. God came to seek and to save that which was lost. And you got to admit that you are a worthless, lost sinner. I know that we've even taken those phrases out of our songbook, such a worm as I. Amazing grace, you know, that saved a wretch like me. No, I don't want to sing that. I don't want to have to say that I'm a wretch. I don't want to have to say such a worm as I. You better say it. God says it. The Bible said in Psalm 22 uh, that it prophesied that of Jesus, I am a worm and no man. Be when he took on the awareness and the feelings of our infirmities and, and, and became sin for us, he said, I feel like a worm and no man. That's what sin will do to you. Somebody has got to stand up to this warm, serpy, uh, uh, sweetie, sweetie, buddy, you know, oh, buddy, you know, is it going to be all right? And preach the word according to the Holy Spirit and do what God said to do and say what God said to say whether you wind up getting thrown out and you out there preaching to the squirrels out in the woods. It's got to be by revelation. If it is by revelation, there will be an isolation. He says uh, in chapter 3, and, and uh, that's uh, that ain't what I want to read. I was going to say three, verse two and three, but he talked about uh, not going up to Jerusalem, chapter two. Then fourteen years after I went up to Jerusalem, he waited fourteen years before he went back up the second time. But what was the first time? Chapter one. Verse 16, God by his grace revealed his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Now, next word. Immediately, when I had the revelation, I immediately had to seek isolation. Dear soul, you need to be careful in your garden that you don't plant your onions too close to, to something else or it'll take on the taste of the onions. You need to be careful, dear soul, that what you 
believe as received from God is not polluted by the influence of other religions. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem. You say, well, and I got saved immediately. I went up there to the First Baptist Church and I wanted them to know uh, that I was saved and, 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 and I want to hear the word of God by then. Fine, well and good. But I'll tell you one thing. You better be careful and understand that God may not be in that church you went to. And there may not be a man in that pulpit that stands with his face like flint and determined to say what God said and not seek to please men, but seek to please God. He says, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. On job training. Had more experience. Well, surely that's where you ought to go. Listen, I didn't go up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. This is Galatians 1, 17. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. This is where the apostle uh, Paul becomes in a personal relationship with the apostle Peter so that they have this working relationship so that Peter understands and knows and there's confirmation of Paul's uh, calling in chapter 2 and verse 9 when they perceived, when Cephas, that's Peter, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. So Peter was able to perceive the grace of God that was in the Apostle Paul after it had gotten so rooted and in depth uh, uh, so that it cannot be persuaded, it could not be uh, uh, cared about by every wind of doctrine, uh, Paul had had this thing so engrafted in him that three years of being alone with God, he came to understand and know by the Holy Spirit that these things were so. And he spent 15 days with Peter after he had been called of God three years. So we find Paul's revelation. We find that to him it required isolation. And then we see that there was a confirmation. They perceived the grace of God that was in me. And then came the trial. Verse 11 of chapter 2. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Here is the manifestation. God's not going to give you something that he don't require you to use. And dear soul, if you, if you want to win friends and influence people, you don't need to be in the pulpit. Because one of the things the Apostle Paul says in the, work, in the, work of, uh, the writings of Corinthians, he has to show and prove himself by evil report as well as good report. You've got to stand still while people lie on you and seek to draw the church members after themselves and start their own work and leave you with a despicable uh, name and a smear of, uh, of, uh, of, of ungodliness upon you and, and leave you like that. And God said, just stand still. You have to prove yourself by evil report and by good report. Pray for them that uh, despitefully use you. And say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for so persecuted they the prophets which were before them. After a revelation with isolation, there will be a confirmation, but then there will have to be a manifestation. You're going to have to live it. You're going to have to confront uh, 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 Peter. You're going to have to stand up and say this is not right. You're going to have to say, it's not right based on my opinion. 
This is the gospel which I preach unto you. Because the gospel that I got, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man. He says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Now, of course, they're going to say, well, yeah, everybody would say that. He got it from God. There's nothing you can do about that. You make sure you stay in the vein of your calling. Don't let them tempt you to come out and argue with them on their, on their, on their ground. That's not where the battle is to be fought. You stay. It, it, do you know what will, will heal the lie? You know what will cure the lie? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. This old lies will begin to fall apart because people are going to have to add to it and, and prop it up and, and, and uh, keep on uh, uh, leveling against uh, the truth of God's word and God's men. But God's dear soul, dear, dear preachers and ministers and mem members will stand upon the word of God and it is that rock you can build your house on and you don't have to worry about it because it's up to God to take care of this word. It's up to them to see after their lives. You do what God says. But sooner or later, you're going to have to confront Peter. Understand, Peter over there at the council in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 50, as recorded in Acts 15, that Peter's, you know, he was doing pretty good. And I understand that God, in Acts chapter 10, straightened him out about Cornelius' house and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, I'm not going to do that. God said, I, I have, don't call that common and unclean, which I have cleansed. But sooner or later, when them old boys come down from Jerusalem, James came down from Jerusalem, Peter decides that he's going to slide back into the Jews' religion. And let's sit over here and talk about the good old days. This old, I have literally sat in, uh, what would they call them, the fellowship halls of Baptist churches invited me to come preach. And there were so many preachers from that area that came, I didn't know any of them, didn't even know the pastor when he called me, that they all sat and talked about old Dr. Bottle Stopper that they went to school under. And here I sit down here at the end of the table by myself, wanting to talk to somebody about the Lord Jesus, wishing that we could have some fellowship in Christ, but there was none. Got up and preached, and one of the wives, one of the wives of one of the ministers, came to me after the meeting and said, I never heard anything like that. And I didn't doubt it. Her husband was a minister. He was the one involved in all these other ministers. And bless her poor old heart, she's starving to death for the gospel, and God had to send an old outsider, an outcast up there, and preach the word of God to him for that poor little old lamb to be able to hear something from the Lord. And dear soul, I'm going to tell you something. It was a lot of wear and tear going all the way up there. Way up north. But I am, I am thankful that God helped me to persevere and to go and say what God said if it was just that one little sheep, Christ's precious little lamb, that got fed the word of God and she was a testimony against her husband and all the rest of those preachers. Unknowingly, she wasn't gospeling. She wasn't saying anything out of out of the uh, out, out of out of order uh, to me. But she just plainly said, "I never heard anything like that before." I didn't doubt it. And I came home knowing that I hadn't done anything <laughs> among all that bunch. They had greatly offended me by separating themselves from me and leaving me by myself to eat, to eat my meal, meals in silence. But dear soul, the one thing that made me thankful that I went and did what God said 
is that dear, dear wife that said, I never heard anything like that before. Dear soul, we are needing men, women, even young people that are saved just to be Christians. Nobody's asking you to get a bullhorn and a bullhorn and stand on the street and embarrass yourself and preach and, and, and do all uh, manner of things like that. All you got to do is just be yourself. It will manifest itself. Our time is gone. Lord willing, we'll try to get more into this in the second lesson. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your attendance and for your attention. May God bless you. Amen.